jump into the introductions. So I will start. Uh, I'm Riley, and I am the bilingual curriculum designer here at HackerGal. I'm also an intermediate senior uh, French as a second language and history teacher. Alongside my colleagues, I developed HackerGal's free graphic design course available on the HackerGal hub called Graphic Design with PixLR. Some of you may have already took this course, so that's so exciting. With my co-host Francesca and, me and, and me Melanie, I will be facilitating this webinar today. And um, take it away, friend. We'd love to get to know you more. Hello, everyone. My name is Francesca, and I used to be a co-op student with HackerGal. While I was a co-op student, I coded link sample projects for the hackathon and edited tutorial videos. Now I am the workshop facilitator at HackerGal. I actually created some of the bite-sized design tutorial videos, which are featured on the HackerGal Hub. So I'm so happy to be here. So back to you, Riley. Thank you for that absolutely amazing intro, Francesca. In just a few short moments, after we go over our learning objectives and schedule for today, I will be introducing you to our guest speaker, Melanie uh, from uh, Sago Mini. She is a senior graphic designer there. As active participants in today's webinar, by the end, I promise you, you each will all be able to learn about the career of a graphic designer from M Melanie, senior graphic designer at Sago Mini. Next, stay tuned to collaborate with your facilitators, Francesca and I, in designing individual elements like customize and arrange images for a poster using tools from the free online graphic design platform, PixLRE. This poster will celebrate women communities in the world of design by incorporating practices like hierarchy, typography, direction, arrangement, and movement. So later on in the webinar, you can ask your design-related questions to our guest speaker and get real-time responses during our live Q&A with Melanie Kemet, the senior graphic designer at Sego Mini. You can also register on our HackerGal Hub and begin your design journey while taking our design our graphic design with PixLR course. Now I'll hand it over to you, Riley. Thank you, Francesca. I would like to now, I am so thrilled to present to you our guest, our guest speaker, Melanie from Sago Mini. Naturally curious, Melanie seeks much of her inspiration from music, travel, and daily wanders through colorful city streets. Whether it's food, culture, or places, there's plenty to encourage exciting new adventures, conversation, as well as inform fresh design thinking. She embraces a simple as best philosophy in her design and illustration work, as well as in her life. A wise man once shared with her, the only thing that matters in life is if you do or do not do things with your heart. She carries those words with her every day. Melanie is a designer and illustrator living in Toronto with her husband, young son, and gray tabby cat. Melanie will now take us through her journey in graphic design. So take it away, M Melanie. We are so thrilled to have you here. Aw, thank you. Hi, girls. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, Riley, for the introduction. As Riley said, my name is Milani Kimmet, and I am Senior Graphic Designer with Sega Mini. Um, firstly, I just really want to say that I am very honored to be here, share my story of how I found the world of design and the career path I've been really just so lucky to take. Um, so I'm curious, how many of you enjoy art and being creative? Um, for me, art was something I just always did or gravitated to. My grade one teacher told my mom that she believed I would one day be a working artist. Um, and I think at the back of my mind, I always leaned into that. Um, I had dreams of becoming an Olympic athlete. I mean, every sport my parents ever involved me in, I convinced myself would be, uh, would take me to the Olympics. A dreamer, I am definitely a dreamer. Um, I also wanted to become a veterinarian uh, because of my love for animals. Uh, but art in the end seemed the most natural fit. Um, something else to note about me, all my life, I've been obsessed with music and bands. Uh, we always had music playing at home. Uh, when it came time to decide what I was going to study, once I graduated high school, 
I knew at that point art would be the focus, but I, I really didn't know how. And, you know, there's so many options to consider. I looked at art history, theater set design, uh, being a painter, a photographer, architect. Uh, I started going through different course calendars from local universities and colleges and the graphic design programs were the ones that uh, really stood out for me. It's, it's strange to think back then, I. I am a bit older than all of you. Uh, I had never heard of graphic design. You know, it, despite being surrounded by it every day and knowing just how well known a career choice it is uh, these days, things have, you know, things have definitely changed. Graphic design is very much a part of popular culture now and something they teach in high school, I think, right? Uh, it's something we all understand. At the time, though, it seemed a brand new concept for a kid like me. The internet was still new, uh, if you can imagine, <laughs> because I am old. <laughs> um, so I relied on my guidance counselor and the course calendars to really help me make such a huge life decision. Thankfully, the course calendars description explained that a career in design would allow me to create concert posters, album covers, magazine layouts, uh, among so many other things. But right there in these beautiful radiating words uh they had laid out my dream job i'd have an opportunity to work in music and art it was the gut check i needed and obviously obviously it was my path you know my path to take uh when i look back on my career there's one thing that is very clear i've always managed to follow my passions and that's something I always encourage others to really strive for or, or seek for yourselves. Um, my love of art uh, and music led me to the graphic design program at George Brown College uh, here in Toronto, which then led to my first job at Much Music. Um, and now if you were a child of the 80s and 90s like me, uh, Much Music really was the coolest place on the planet for any Canadian kid. I I don't know how well known or loved it is anymore. Uh, you'll have to tell me. <laughs> uh, the world of TV or how we consume media has changed so much since then, uh, this much I know. But they newly graduated me. Uh, every morning I walked through those doors, I had to pinch myself a little. I, I worked for much and many of the other channels coming out of that building for six years and designed everything from physical props and set design items for our BJs and other on-air talent to billboards and show graphics for big events like the MMVAs. Uh, if you're too young to remember, the MMVAs are the Much Music Video Awards, which became huge. They literally closed down traffic around uh, the intersection of Queen and John here in Toronto. It's an open air award show at the mercy of the weather. Uh, thousands of screaming fans line up for days just to get up close to either of the two main stages. Uh, it's quite the event, uh, free, open to the public, always fun. Um, but while I'm much, I learned a lot in my first design role and being around musicians and celebrities on a daily basis, yeah, that was pretty cool too. I still pinch myself a little remembering those days and also very grateful I was able to have that music and art pairing to really start off my career. Uh, I mentioned earlier I wanted to be an Olympic athlete um, when I was younger. After six years at much, I was ready to move on, try something new. Vancouver had just been awarded the 2010 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games. I noticed they were looking to hire a team of in-house graphic designers. Being such a fan, there was, there was no way. There was no way I was not going to try for that role. I got my portfolio ready and I applied. Half believing um, it was just totally out of reach. A kid like me still feeling somewhat fresh out of school. You don't get to work on projects like that, right? Uh, but like I never, never give in to imposter syndrome because my creative director saw something in me. And a month and a half later, I was invited to join the team in Vancouver and finally have my Olympic dream, not as an athlete, but as a designer instead. Um, our team developed the Vancouver 2010 brand and what we called the look of the games. We were hands-on on everything brand related from collateral design, or in other words, all printed pieces that had the Vancouver 2010 logo on it, 
uh, like annual reports or various marketing materials to the intricate design system that inspired our ticket design, merchandise, uh, and field of play graphics. If field of play graphics is sort of a new term for you, like, like think link uh, rink boards or alpine gates, fencing. We wrapped uh, planes and ferries. Uh, the design of the medals and our, our mascots was something I was also a part of. I, I played more of an art director role on those though. Um, my experience there really spanned from print designer to industrial designer. Never a dull day, uh, that, is, that is for sure. But my three and a half years at the Olympics, they were full, full of new professional opportunities and lifelong friendships, which yes, I am extremely proud of. But it was also incredibly stressful. The timelines were tight, the pressure was high, you know, the world was watching. Um, so once we wrapped the games in March of 2010, I, I decided to lay low for a while uh, for my own sanity and, and health. Um, we were all nearing burnout by the end of our time there. I found myself uh, freelancing for several years, reconnecting to who I was as a person and as a creative. As much as the Olympics were a professional highlight, many life lessons were also wrapped up in, in that time too. Uh, I learned that stress can be good, but there's a limit uh, as well. And it's important to remember to always strive for that healthy work-life balance. Um, in those post-Olympic years, I ended up creating my own line of products where I honed in on my love of illustration and animals. Uh, Lots of printed goods, explored surface pattern design. Uh, if you're not familiar with that term, the that's essentially like creating patterns that are then printed or transferred to any product's surface. So wallpaper, stationery, or you know other textile goods. Um, there's really no end to where the patterns can be applied, um, which was an exciting area to explore. Um, but I've since put a hold on any of that kind of work and um, and you know hope to someday get back to it. Uh, again, one of my biggest passions now is my son, uh, who's six years old. I discovered Sega Mini as a curious parent looking for fun, creative, and beautifully designed apps for my two and a half year old. Uh, he was two and a half at the time. And being a creative, I'm quite particular when it comes to aesthetics. Um, Sega Mini caught my eye right away. Uh, and when I realized they were headquartered in Toronto, I knew that's where I wanted to work next. The, the joy I saw this company give to my child on a daily basis, I, I wanted to be a part of that. As a parent, there's no greater sound than the sound of my kids' laughter. And as a mom who wants nothing more than more laughter in the world, um, I, I was waiting. I, I waited for my opportunity to say hello uh, while I continued to run my own business as a freelancer. And in June of 2019, the role of senior marketing designer opened up. Uh, I've worked across broadcast, sport and entertainment, and now finding myself in the tech space at Sega Mini. I really have to say I've, I've never felt happier or have felt as challenged working as a marketing designer. The scope of how or where you market your product is, is ever changing, which pushes me to continuously learn and to stay curious, which is important in any job, I think. Um, as a marketing designer at Segamini, we are the keepers of the brand, uh, ensuring that every piece that goes out to the external public is cohesively on brand from a color palette, font, layout, and detail perspective. Uh, I work with an extremely talented group of artists who are illustrating and building explorative worlds for our youngest, most curious minds every day. We know the power and the importance of our products but our biggest job as marketing designers is to package that play experience for the parents and other guardians who are navigating the app stores and or social platforms, you know, inviting them in through image and text. I know as, as a parent, it was very important that I find apps that were going to serve my son well by keeping the play experience pure and avoiding overwhelm. Uh, so many fun, minimal design and soft colors and, even the sound design, it's, it's not annoying. <laughs> you know, we think about sound too, um, really appealed to me as a parent and a creative. And that is really our overall design philosophy for all that we do, that it's clear, it's concise, giving focus to our much loved characters and allowing curiosity to really engage the children to learn through laughter. And we base 
all that we do on trusted and extensive research. Uh, and in that research, we know that kids are more open to learning through play. And I'm pretty sure we could probably also relate to that too, right? Makes sense. Um, so there are three marketing designers on the team right now. We each lead one of Sega Mini's main products. And we're all go girls too, by the way. We've got lots of female energy on the marketing team. Um, but our two main apps are World and School. Uh, our physical product is, is a subscription box that is really bringing the World app to life. Uh, I lead the design on World's marketing assets, but I'm also responsible for most of the social assets you see for all of the three products. Uh, I've already mentioned that there are several ways we market our products, but one of the most important is the, the app store. I'm sure you're all familiar with the App Store's user experience. Uh, I've said already, I came across Sega Mini some years ago through the App Store and for so many of our families, it really is the gateway uh, into our apps and products. As, as crowded as the App Stores are, it's important that we stand out and that parents understand that we're offering what we're offering and appreciate the value our, our products serve. Over the pandemic, we were a crucial relief for so many families who had parents working from home while children were kept home from school and daycares. When too much screen time is something you're worried about, um, avoiding apps that really hover in that area of overwhelm with too much sound and, and too many visuals, uh, our, our apps could be seen as an escape from that. You know, they're gentler, they're calmer, um, and we're extremely proud of that. Now, for a bit more context, World is a subscription-based product. So like Netflix, you purchase either a monthly or annual subscription, giving you access to all of our games. Right now we have over 40 games just within World uh, and we're continuously adding to that collection too. Uh, with every new release, it's my job to create what we call preview update screenshots, which is what you see here. Uh, if you've found your way to us through the App Store, uh, this is what you see. And it's our product page detailing the app's core values, benefits, ratings, and reviews. Uh, but the, Im the imagery is what I'm piecing together in order to package the world play experience with visual context. Um, our newest game, Winter City, uh, which actually launched yesterday, uh, is, the t is the theme for this, uh, these newest screenshots. Um, these screenshots are more or less templated out now uh, after much refinement, uh, many, many uh, different templates tried. <laughs> uh, although we're constantly testing new templates to see which layout brings in the most families. Um, but my job is to create or refine that template and build the scenes that you're seeing here, plan the interactions between characters and overall gameplay uh, on each and every one of these panels. Uh, and still to ensure ensure that it all still fits a theme with us launching winter city i mean the, you know these obviously needed a winter theme uh and in quite a few of our games we have we have winter ele uh, elements year round so it's important that these scenes show as much variety as possible whether it's the characters we're showing or uh, the different kinds of activities found in any of our wintry games uh, we're really looking for overall balance with over 40 games, there is lots of art and content to pull from and create something new every time. We update these particular screenshots with every, or, or sorry, we update these particular screenshots every few months. Uh, so if you check the app store again this spring, you'll see all new artwork, uh, likely with a spring theme and whatever our newest game is about. At least I could tell you or hint at what the news game will be, but uh, I'll have to keep that secret for now. Um, we'd love to hear your guesses, though. Um, this is just one area we design for. Uh, we're also expanding our social media presence. TikTok is our newest platform, which I'm having a lot of fun exploring and designing for. Like I said, always changing with the changing media, uh, which is the exciting part and the challenge I'm really looking for in my career these days. Um, and all while playing a part in bringing more laughs and entertainment and relief to families' homes around the world. That feels pretty good at the end of the day, uh, especially the harder days. And there are hard days, but the important thing is to always remember why you do what you do 
lean on your teammates and never be too hard on yourself. We're here to learn and to always improve ourselves and the world around us. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's me. That's my career in design uh, so far. Uh, I'm a huge believer in following your passions. Uh, you never know where they'll take you or what doors they may open for you. Um, so I'm just really curious to hear what your passions are, where you hope to take your own design path. There's so many cool tools out there now to play and create with. Um, so I encourage you to, to do all of that and to stay curious. Uh, I'm excited to see what you all do with it. Thanks for listening. Good luck, hacker gals. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your inspiring story, Melanie. So now we have, um, some questions that we will dive deep into the world of graphic design by designing a poster that celebrates women in design. So we have some questions here that you can answer in the chat. Um, so the first one is, can you name women or communities of women foundational to the design world? So type your answers in the chat and we'll see what you think. Let's think about these questions. So the question is, can you name women or communities of women who are foundational to the, to the design world? Do you know anyone in graphic design? I can name at least one person. We met her earlier today, <laughs> like a few seconds ago. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. She works for Sego Mini. <laughs> Melanie, exactly. Melanie is someone, is a woman in the design world. <laughs> Thank you everyone for your responses. Let's go to the next question. Why is it important to acknowledge and celebrate the contributions of communities of women in graphic design? We can think about that question for a little bit. So why is it important? Any answers in the chat? Any ideas? Exactly, I like that answer, Lily. There is not that many women in the graphic design field. Great job, thank you for your answers, everyone. So we can move on. So women have always been and remain at the forefront of the graphic design world. In fact, according to the Associated Designers of Canada in 2015, graphic design is the creative sector with one of the lesser gender gaps in Canada with women representing 43.8% of the industry. So it's a little bit higher, but it's still not, you know, a really big number. So your answers were, really close, so thank you. So, onto the next slide, we have some women who are pioneers in the field of design. So first we have Marianne Banches. She's a Canadian graphic designer, writer, illustrator, and typographer, internationally renowned for her detailed yet precise work blending vector graphics and text. And next we have Reiko Kodama. She is a graphic artist and video game developer behind the artwork for Sega's Fantasy Star, an RPG with a very strong female protagonist. And next we have Gail Anderson. She is a graphic designer, writer, and creative director at New York's Visual Arts Press, known internationally for her influential typography and arrangement in poster design. And last but not least, we have Susan Kerr. She is a graphic designer who created the Apple Macintosh's first icons. Isn't that crazy? We see Apple everywhere and she created the first icon. So today we will design together a poster or a zine, which is a non-commercial specialized poster. We will celebrate the innovations of pioneering women in design and recognize how, they, how these women not only re revolutionize the design world, but mobilize communities of women in design along the way. 
We will highlight the achievements of these women by showcasing their work and incorporating the very design practices that they champion into our poster by activating specific tools on PixLRE, the free web-based photo editor and graphic design platform that we use within our graphic design with PixLR course, available on the HackerGal Hub. So you can design with us your own images, inventing your own poster theme in order to achieve the products that we will be making together. Okay, thank you, Francesca. I will let you screen share now, um, but we will put, uh, uh, Jennifer or one of us will put the link um, for PixLR into the chat so you all can follow along. Um, if you'll give me one short second to do that and we will get started with it. And like Francesca said, we will be, you will be able to choose your own theme as you design along with us. So that will be in the chat. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Now. Um, so you're going to head to pixelart.com, which I see that Francesca has already done. That's awesome, Fran. Um, and you're going to begin your project. We recommend that you create a new. So once you get to pixelart.e, we recommend that you create a new um uh workspace and that you add image layers to it instead of starting um from a an image that you might have on your on your um on your laptop so francesca is going to not add a background this is something you can choose to do you can have a background color but francesca is going to keep it transparent um because we're going to showcase a lot of other tools around transparency and background um, so when she's ready, she's going to click create. Thank you, Francesca. And here we have our workspace. Now, the first thing that Francesca is going to do is she's going to go to the navigate pane, which is on the right hand side of the PixLR workspace. And she is going to go to the plus button to click uh, on the quick layer add. Once she clicks on that, uh, Emma, you'll be using PixLR E. Once she clicks on that, there are different layer types that she can begin designing. She is going to choose image layer. And what that will do is it's going to prompt her files on her computer and she can upload um, an image from her computer. So we, since the, we are celebrating women and their contributions to the world of graphic design, we, um, we decided that we, uh, we will be starting uh, with a beautiful paintbrush. Uh, we'll just give it a second so people can just um, get catch on to Pixel RE. Yes, so you will you will be clicking on create a new. Uh, maybe Fra Francesca wants to go back and show. So Francesca will go back to her home screen and she's going to click on create new. And in that, Oh, so the, the paintbrush, as we said, the paintbrush is our image. You can choose to upload any image that you might have on your laptop or your device um, or your phone. Um, but you can choose your own theme for, your, um, for the, the poster that you're going to make. Ours is celebrating women in the world of graphic design. So that's, that is uh, why we chose a paintbrush. <laughs> awesome. So. Francesca, just to recap, Francesca went to the quick layer ad, uh, which is in the um, navigate pane, and she decided to click on image. And that brought up uh, the files from her computer where she already had this uh, free image uh, saved that was downloaded from Pixabay. So she saved it and uploaded it. And now we have, as you can see in the layers pane, which is also in the navigate pane, we have the paintbrush image that is on top of the layer, okay? Now, 
Francesca would like to modify this beautiful icon, similar to Susan Kerr's beautiful iconography that she made for our MacBooks that we all know and our Apple products that we know and love now. Mm -hmm. This is an icon uh, representing design, but Francesca wants to customize it to give her that little hacker gal flair that we always love doing. So Francesca is going to go to um, the pixel art toolbox, which is on the left hand side. So to add an image, just to recap really, really quickly, you go to the plus button in the navigate pane and you can click on image and that will pull up images from your computer. Great. Um, so going forward, uh, Francesca is going to go to, uh, great. She is going to go to the um, pixel art toolbox and she's going to select the lasso select tool. Now, this is a very important aspect. As you can see, we have no background. Um, you can also see that Jen Jennifer has put a definition of the lasso select tool in the chat just to give you a bit more context. And maybe you want to save it and use it a little bit later on. Um, but uh, she is going to take the lasso select tool. And, and at the top hand pane, you can see that there are different types now. Francesca is going to choose magnetic and we will be explaining why. Okay, so she's going to click on magnetic and she's going to choose magnetic. So that way, when she creates the selection of using the lasso select tool of the area that she wants to modify, it will automatically um, magnetize to the border. So she won't lose the border, which is important because if she loses the border, then we kind of lose the entire silhouette of the brush. So all Francesca has to do now is simply click onto her trackpad and drag around the selection that she wants to remove. And as you can see, it's looking great. Now, once she's done, she's going to bring that tool a little bit further in and double click. And as you can see, the little dotted lines around are sort of um, animating a little bit, going in and out, right? Now, this means the tool is working, which is great. <laughs> uh, that's always what we want, don't we? Now, Francesca, <laughs> Francesca is now going to click the delete key on her device's keypad. And in doing that, it has automatically removed the area. Amazing. V yes, very quickly to, to undo, you can go to the file, um, file uh, edit, uh, the edit uh, drop down pane and you simply click undo, or you can do control plus, plus C. But it's awesome that uh, Francesca did this uh, very, very quickly and very, very well. <laughs> um, so as you can see that image, uh, that part of the image, the desired element is now empty, which is great. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, the lasso, this is, we chose the lasso select tool. There are other tools that you might, maybe if you've used uh, Photoshop, you might've heard of sort of like the wand tool, or um, there's also the marquee select tool. These are good options. Um, one select is better for removing big areas. So imagine the background and it works with uh, detection of color. Um, so when it sees uh, a, a new color, it will automatically um, understand that it needs to cut out around there. Whereas the lasso select tool, when you put it on magnetized mode, you can really create the desired area that you want to customize. And this is how we create customized clip art. Um, great, moving on. So Francesca is now going to go to the, back to the uh, first thing that she's going to do is she's going to right click anywhere on the screen, and she's going to click deselect. This automatically deselects the lasso tool from being in use, which is what we need right now. So Fra Francesca is now going to go to the uh, pixel art toolbox on the left-hand side, and she's going to go to our handy dandy fill tool. Can you click on that, Francesca? Amazing. So right now, as you can see, there's a color palette. And as Melanie so wonderfully explained to us, color palettes are extremely important in determining the brand, uh, the identity of a brand, essentially. Um, having, being able to create an impact and reach your community um, with sort of your own interface. So Francesca's gonna click on the color palette and Francesca's gonna choose 
any color that she desires. Now, I have a feeling, mm, I forgot, I think Francesca is really into purple and pink. I think, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's amazing, Francesca. So Francesca is going to choose this lovely purple color, which is similar to the Hacker Girl purple. And she's going to now take that, she's already on the fill tool and she's going to fill in the center. Let's see if it, and as you can see, some of the borders, some of the borders, um, were lost. So Francesca to really quickly, Francesca can undo and use the lasso select tool once again, because now she will be more careful when she's tracing with the lasso tool so that she doesn't lose the borders because when she loses the borders then the whole background. So Francesca is going to go back once more. She's doing an amazing job. Let's all hear it for Francesca in the chat. Isn't she just, isn't she just a superstar? Um, Thank you, Liv, that's amazing. Yes, so she's going to make sure she's on magnetic mode and she is going to, this time, that is at least, you can also zoom in, which is a good, uh, very, very good tool. And Francesca is going to make her selection now. Amazing. And it doesn't even have to be the whole thing. It could be a part, really, however you wanna customize it. So let's see. Double click, amazing, and delete key. Okay, so it looks like we might not have lost too much of the border there. Let's let, let's try. As we know, um, there's a lot of testing and debugging that goes into mm -hmm. designing. So this is really the process that you gotta do. Amazing, can we all clap for Francesca? We knew she could do it and this looks wonderful. And it actually looks um, like she sort of dipped the brush in some paint. I love it. I think it looks very cool, very awesome, very re realistic, amazing work. So now we're going to go on to um, an area, a design practice, which um, we call movement. And movement is very important. Think of um, Raiko's amazing game, she's done the artwork and the animation for, or also think back to um, Marion's beautiful icons and text and, and having uh, images and text look like they're kind of organic and moving. This is a really important practice um, in the design world. So Francesca, in order, to, in order to do this, Francesca is going to go to the layers pane, amazing. And she is going to click on the layer and she is going to duplicate the layer, um, which is just beside the quick layer add. So click on your desired layer, which is the paintbrush, and she's going to duplicate it not only once, but twice. And you'll, you'll see why soon. Now, imagine that someone has just picked up the paintbrush. So let's say it's resting sort of flat on a table. Now, in order to move it upwards, as if someone had picked it up, how will we need to reorient the new layer copies? Can I see some people in the chat? What, what, in what direction will we need to go? If we want to mimic someone picking up a paintbrush, like from here to here. <laughs> yes, it, it, could, could, it could be, it depends. <laughs> Okay, so Francesca is now going to go to the arrange tool, which is in the, <laughs> Jennifer's a lefty, which is in the um, pixel art toolbox. She's going to click on it and Francesca is going to move it, reorient, okay, on the top. And she is going to have the first copy go up. She's then going to click in the, in the navigate pane on the second copy. Amazing, and she's going to do the same thing. Now, that looks fantastic. So what Francesca is going to do now is in order to really have the effect that there was motion and movement and that this was a process that took place over the course of a couple seconds, mm -hmm. Francesca is going to go to the first copy. She's going to click on it and click on the settings. And Francesca is going to lower the opacity. So opacity is the ability to which light can pass through an object, which makes, um, which makes it very um, translucent almost and mimics the effect that, you know, this was an action that took place in slow motion. So she's going to uh, lower it to about 75%. Now she's going to go to uh, the second copy, which 
probably came second in this order. Transparency, yes, you can also use that, but it's easier on the layer settings. So she's going to click on that and she's going to lower the opacity to about further down. So as if that was the first one, that was the first action. Okay, amazing. Now, in order to blend these images together to create one product, there's a really handy dandy function on the layer settings. So Francesca's going to go to her first layer copy. She's going to click on it and she's going to go to the layer settings and she's going to hit the merge down tool. Now she's going to replicate the step a second time. Amazing work, Francesca. And now if you click the arrange tool in the pixel or toolbox, which allows you to move things around, let's move it around. <gasps> Et voila, we have one beautiful image. So the merge down tool is really important when you're creating customized products and you need things uh, to fuse into one layer, super important. Now, the last thing, which is very important too, um, to kind of make this poster stand out is um, Francesca is, is essentially going to quickly add a background on her first layer with the fill tool. She's going to click on the layer and she's going to use the fill tool. She's going to choose a separate color, maybe with more of a contrast. Okay, let's do a pink. Okay. And she's going to simply click anywhere and her layer. And as you can see, it gives a really cool effect because the opacity is, is, is there's more opacity. So the pink is coming through, which looks pretty cool if you ask me. And I love it. Kind of looks like the paint has dissipated. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now she's going to add some text layers. So she's going to go back to the quick layer add and she's going to quickly add text layer. And Francesca already has some pre-made copy around what text she wants. So she's gonna to go to her document, amazing. And Francesca is going to add, copy and paste her text. Now, Francesca is essentially, we need to, arrange these and we also need to apply practices of typography to them so the first thing that francesca is going to do is um oh that's amazing i love typography too piper that's awesome um similar to gail anderson's work where she creates beautiful broadway posters and you kind of have um text everywhere and it's arranged in different ways this is how you can really make those abstract kind of looks stand out and be really user-friendly as well so Francesca's going to choose a sans serif font. So she's going to go to the font drop down, and she's simply going to just type in uh, sans serif. So sans serif fonts are fonts that are really good for numeric um, digital screens because they don't have hooks in between the letters. So we recommend using them. So Arial is an example of that, which is a font we're all pretty familiar with, I believe. Now Francesca's going to choose a beautiful color. I think white is actually pretty good because of the contrast um, and we want people to be able to read it well. And the last thing she's going to do is she's going to space out the letters. So Francesca is going to go to the format tool at the top and she's going to go to line spacing, yes, and letter spacing, which is really important um, to be able to, to see things uh, well and have them look Beautiful. Now, the last thing that Francesca is going to do is arrange these in interesting abstract ways. So Francesca is going to copy and paste um, each individual um, text layer. She's going to duplicate it. Very good. Awesome. Love it. And she's going to get rid of, she's got five different text layers now, and she's going to uh, just have one of the words um, in each layer, and she's going to arrange them very beautifully around. So I'll just give her a chance to do that. It's looking wonderful. I love it so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's let Francesca uh, finish that up and we will, we will also do one more thing <laughs> before we move on to our Q and A. Looks beautiful. I love how she put the text behind the image. You can play around with um, how all the um, layers are ordered by just dragging and dropping them in the layers pane, which is super awesome. Looks great. I love it. And Francesca will just get rid of some of the other text and leave our last one, which I believe is um, arrangement. Perfect. Can we all give a beautiful round of applause for Francesca and her amazing design work? She is 
has done an amazing job and I want everyone to congratulate her in the chat. This is awesome. And she's Thank created you. a really funky poster, which would be totally cool. Um, now we are going to move on to our Q and A. Um, so I am going to reshare my screen. Thank you books. That's awesome. Go Fran. <laughs> Thank you everyone. Yes. That's amazing. Um, Give me one moment. That would be much appreciated. Okay, looks like we have Lily is asking, how long have you worked at Sago Mini for? Uh, about how long? About two and a half years now, actually. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's never the same every day. It's a little different. Um, my role is essentially the same, but every game feels so different. Um, it, it, it's, it's always very, very exciting. I've actually done some voiceover work too for um, one of our new characters, in one of our last uh, games. Um, so yeah, it's always changing. <laughs> that is so amazing. Yeah, that's, that must be such a dynamic um, place to work with a lot going on. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Another question that we have uh, from um, someone else is, what is the day-to-day -day like of a marketing designer? The day-to-day, -day, um, there is a lot of uh, coordinating planning uh, assets, understanding what, uh, understanding the product too, um, because I look after world. Um, I need to I need to know what we're developing uh, on the world side. Uh, what is the new game going to look like? Uh, who are the new characters? Um, so it's, it's a lot of uh, information um, hoarding, I guess. <laughs> um, and then um, really compiling that. So we've actually been really smart on the marketing side. We've started um, a couple of really great uh, docs where we, we put in a lot of the new characters um, that helps us build a lot of what we're doing. So like I said, I'm, I'm building a lot of scenes and compositions for a lot of the assets that, that kind of go out there. Um, so it's important that I'm, I am you know, isolating a lot of the new artwork that yeah, our artists are actually um, creating sort of on a daily basis. So it's, yeah, it's, that, that would be the day-to-day. -day. Um, and then um, it's just this, there's like social media is, is ever going. And so we're, we're constantly developing new, new social assets too. Um, hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. That was lovely. Yeah, that's, it, 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 there's so many um, elements and I really like your adaptability and like flexibility and wanting to know about all the new, media and types of media there's there's a lot out there and it's it's, it's yeah. really it's good to be curious all the time isn't it <laughs> mm -hmm. yes yeah <laughs> yeah uh, someone else has asked what is the difference between a content designer and a marketing designer that's a good question mm, that is a good question a content designer versus a marketing designer i guess <sighs> i mean i think that they can be the same really i mean because you know what what, what I'm doing is really about content is we're, we're trying to, we're getting content out uh, to, to people. I think content, actually, let me put it this way. So marketing designer, that's, that's my marketing designer hat sits in the app store world. Um, content designer is what we're doing on social because uh, social, we're not really there to we're there to market, but at the same time, it's really about building community. I mean, the theme today is community, right? So we're building a community of parents, like-minded parents who understand what we do, the importance of what we do, uh, our brand. And so that is where the content, I think the content designer sort of really, really lives, um, is uh, ensuring that we've got a strong community uh, who understand what we're all about. Amazing. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely love that, like just t tailoring it to, um, you know, your audience. And, and that's something that um, we at Hacker Gal uh, try to do with all of our, our community of girls um, and within our courses as well. That, that's, that's amazing. Um, oh, Liv has a great question. What was it like at the Olympics? <laughs> um, 
it was fun. It was fun. And it was, I, I learned a lot. Um, but it is a stressful environment. You know, you have deadlines, you cannot move. Um, you know, the, the Olympics happen on this day, you know, the opening ceremonies is happening, whether, you know, we are ready or not. Um, so it's just, there's a lot of different components that go into any games. And, and like I, you know, I sort of, I sort of covered, um, we as a design team touched every branded piece. Um, and when you are communicating to the world that you are, you know, throwing a really big party, <laughs> um, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff that you are uh, responsible for um, getting that messaging out. So yeah, it, uh, it's kept me busy. Um, and very thankful for the opportunity. I may do it again. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at now. Uh, this is the pace that I am comfortable with. You know, I have a family now. So um, this one, this this job keeps me very busy in, in a different way, um, in a very balanced way. <laughs> Work-life balance is very important. Uh, that's what I learned when I was at the Olympics. Great answer. That is um, also, also very cool to know that we might know what's happening next. We might see Melanie's beautiful work <laughs> on the next Olympics. So stay tuned, everyone. That's uh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, we'll do one last question. Um, what has been the most rewarding part of being part of the Seigel mini community? Most rewarding part? I think it, because it is so personal to me. Uh, we, I, we knew Seigel mini before I started working here. You know, we saw it as a family and what it meant to our little boy and us as a family. Um, the giggles that came out of my kid, you know, playing these these silly little games. Um, it's just that makes you feel good. Um, and uh, and then like also like understand like the relief, you know, like we're all about like managed screen time, like where not too much. Um, and so this one felt like very very nice, uh, very very calming uh, for for everyone at home. Um, so. It, knowing that it, it it touches the child, but also the family, um, and the, it, the the positive impact it has on families, um, that's I think that's the biggest takeaway. The most positive aspect to this uh, is that we're really we're really here for families, and that's that is and that's really our motivation too. Um, I mean, I talk about being a marketing designer, but it's it's not it's not about the monetary gain. It's really about like putting that positivity out into the world. Um, and that's, that's, that's really what, what drives us every day. So that's really my, my biggest, my biggest positive <laughs> um, working at Sego. Thank you. Um, this Q and A has been amazing. I guess we have like one minute for one really short question. One more. What tools do you like using for your work? <laughs> if you can answer uh, that really quickly. <laughs> um, it's a combination of, of a couple of things. So I'm definitely on computer. So like uh, a lot of the Adobe products, um, I'm usually using Illustrator, uh, but I do a lot of sketching too, like in a notepad. Uh, some ideas that us where they start first, uh, you know, and I'm very, I suppose I'm traditional in that way. Again, I'm, I'm older than, than some. So, <laughs> uh, and when I went to art school, everything was, was hand drawn first. We did everything by hand. Um, I don't know how things are structured now in design school, but I believe it's probably still, you know, doing everything by hand first. Um, cause I think that's a good base, uh, for a lot of, a lot of things. And, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a combination of both. Beautiful answer. I love it. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for, um, being a part of this webinar and this Q and A has been absolutely, uh, fantastic. Um, let me just, now we'll have Fran, uh, turn on her camera so she can talk a little bit about our graphic design on pixel art course. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Riley. So if you liked how we used PixLR to create our community poster, then you should check out HackerGal's graphic design course with PixLR. 
on the HackerGal Hub. The link to the HackerGal Hub will be posted in the chat. And if you haven't already, sign up to the Hub by creating an account with your email. Our graphic design course will cover many interesting design concepts like we discussed today, including hierarchy, typography, and so much more. The course also teaches you how to use the free Photoshop alternative website, PixLRE, and its limitless applications. You can learn more skills with our course and you can create even more posters and designs beyond what we showed you during this webinar. And also as a reminder to join our final event, our live games night and closing party from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. Not only will we be having an incredible time filled with a variety of interactive games, we'll also have a live raffle to win an Android tablet. And guess what? To win the prize, all you have to do is attend. So the link will be posted in the chat. Thank you, Francesca. And I also just want to give another huge thank you to Melanie for sharing her experiences and expertise as a graphic designer with us.